Hey everyone, it's Kim Justice here. Now this is going to be, um, I guess, a little different sort of video for me. Some people have kind of asked me over the years, Hey Kim, why don't you do a room tour? Lots of other people on YouTube have done it over the years, especially in the retro gaming community, and I've kind of thought, should I do it, should I not? I mean, I look around my room and I kind of think it's very unimpressive. I mean, I do like watching game room tour videos, it's kind of one of those guilty pleasures of mine, so... You know, I've done my due diligence, I've done my research, and I've watched, you know, the likes of The Last Gamer, The Immortal John Hancock, My Life in Gaming, Metal Jesus Rocks. They've all got these really fantastic rooms. So, you know, I had a look at them, I had a little bit of green with envy, had a little cry, and then decided that, you know, sod it, I'm going to do mine. I don't care how completely unimpressive my room is. If I can't make the best game room tour on YouTube for the retro community, then you know what I can do? I damn well can make the worst. So, without any further ado do, as the infamous YouTube phrase goes, here is my game room. So this is kind of the little overview you can see, and it is literally one room, there is no other room. This is um, the room where I do uh, literally everything. I work in this room, I play in this room and I rest in this room. I've got my workstation, I've got my games and I've got my bed. And you may be wondering, Kim, is it really that good an idea to have the place where you work, the place where you chill out and the place where you sleep all in the same room? Is it really a good idea, you know, mentally? No, <laughs> no it isn't. But that's what I kind of have to do at the moment. This is just the space that I've got for my fins. So I guess I shall um, give you a look around all the various little nooks and crannies that are in here. So this is the little kind of retro corner. I keep most of my consoles here. I've kind of got my Mega Drive, which is up top here. It takes pride of place, my Japanese Mega Drive, as it happens. Um, and the various shelves, we've got Super Nintendo, we've got an AV Famicom, Dreamcast, Wii U, N64, you know, all the usual good shit. Um, how many of these consoles are actually um, hooked up, you might ask? Um, amazingly, virtually none of them. I have very little actual power in this room, like, I've got a couple of, like, things that I can use for power, there's really not much, so I'm very limited into what I can actually hook up at any given time. I mean, obviously, we've got a nice bit of Shaq Fu running on this um, retro CRT. Now, obviously, a lot of people, when they do this, they kind of shut off their PVMs and all that lot. I don't have any need for a PVM when I've got this um, Toshiba Tex CRT TV. Um, that flickers a lot if you move it to any um, sort of degree. But there you go, it's fine now. Um, yeah, I picked it up for, like, on eBay eBay somewhere for about uh, 20 quid. It was a collection thing and luckily the seller was in South End. So yeah, I've been blessed with this little CRT to really, you know, get that retro experience on the go. So uh, yeah, it's good. Really is, honestly. And looking down here, um, I have my um, Bainbridge uh, switcher, which I use to um, put um, all the uh, retro consoles that I can't actually connect together and there's a whole bunch of controllers. Now you might be wondering um, why it's in such a kind of awkward and very messy position and well it's because of the flickering on that old CRT that I just showed you. That's just the position that it seems to work the most in. I would like to put it neatly on that speaker but um, it doesn't really seem to work when I do. Never mind. Now this here, perhaps a little bit more impressive, I don't know, some people might say this though, is a little telly that I do most of my fins on. It's um, a big old 60 inch thing I'm still paying for actually so hopefully there's no problems with it but it should be all good. Um, yeah it's actually a really cool little telly, it's an LG 1080p. Um, I kind of thought you know even though I do a lot of editing I thought do I really want like multiple monitors and all that lot and I kind of thought nah I'd rather just have a nice big telly because not only can I use it for my work because it's got obviously plenty of space on the actual screen but you know I can use it when I'm just chilling out watching movies or YouTube videos like uh, this one here, uh, good old 
with Hope of the Week with you in a sandwich. Now this actually is one of the things that is most awesome in this room. I do have a XRGB Mini Frame Meister. This actually was a gift um, a couple of years ago from a subscriber. Literally I kind of just put all. Oh, I wouldn't mind having a Frame Meister and uh, someone said oh you want a Frame Meister and, um, and they gave me the money for it which was um, pretty crazy. Still one of the absolute craziest things I think that's happened to me in my YouTube career. I kind of go around like sometimes I play games on an old retro telly like you know the piece of crap that I've got here sometimes I play them on my HD telly I can do it either way it's useful if especially useful of course if I capture from real hardware um, I can hook up anything to that I mean it is an awesome bit of kit and I'm really kind of happy to have it in my room it's <laughs> something that's actually really good in here there are some good things in here it's not all um unusable rubbish. Now this absolute mess of wires here is where my gaming PC lives. I mean, well I say gaming PC, it's, I do game on it but I also edit on it and um, browse social media on it and look up cat videos on it and all the other stuff. Uh, forgive the kind of mess, I didn't actually clean up before doing this video, I kind of didn't think it was really worth it. Uh, there's a PlayStation 3 near it. Uh, this is an MSI mini PC, it's uh, kind of a couple years old now, it's, uh, it's uh, okay, it's a good um, it's not really, the trouble with it is, because it's a mini PC and it's got such a small form factor, you can't actually really upgrade in it. I mean, I would like to get a nice new graphics card for it, but how the hell would I actually fit it in? So, um, I might actually need to properly upgrade that at some point, and maybe also clean up that desk. Um, if you look through the uh, myriad of wires, you can also see my Ava Media Live Gamer Extreme, which is what I use to capture any footage from the consoles. So, that's that. Now, here is something else that's kind of my absolute pride and joy. My musical instruments, my bass and my guitar. The bass is a Ibanez, the SDCR50 I think it is. Um, and it's a really good instrument, it's a proper like studio bass. You can do pretty much most anything on it, get any kind of tone that you want. And it was a very kind of happy purchase for me. Um, it is my go-to bass. I kind of really like Ibanez instruments. And next to it is a Gibson SG, which I've had for ages. Um, my dad bought it me. It's um, it's a Gibson SG. It's a proper, lovely, classic uh, rock guitar. It does get some use. Uh, missing a string at the moment, unfortunately, which I need to replace. But I'm sure I will in good time. Also. Um, just kind of to the left looking a bit unlovely is my Squire Fretless, you can just about see the back of it. Currently out of commission at the moment, it's uh, the electronics on it need fixing, I need to get the older soldering iron out and um, dab some stuff on the collections, do that older Lord of Volta thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I think you can see behind those guitars is where I keep my books. I have all various books from kind of serious gaming books to um, Viz annuals to some classics, uh, music journals, other weird things that kind of represented a month's worth of interest. I think there's even like there's a golf practice book at one stage uh, ten years ago. So I really wanted to get into golf for about a month, so I bought a David Ledbetter book. So um, that's there. Um, I haven't read it in about ten years, but it's there anyway. And yes, generally all other sorts of literature that I can uh, peruse at my leisure so long as I get those bass guitars and that out of the way and don't fall over anything in the process. Okay, so this here is my record collection. I've got six big old IKEA Kallax shelves for it. I've just kind of recently moved it. Actually, it was kind of in the main um, IKEA load of crap, but now it's here. Um, I have hundreds of records. Um, Mostly stuff that I got from boot sales and record fairs quite a long time ago now actually. I haven't really added anything to this record collection in a really long time. Um, one of the big things that I have here, mainly on this shelf, is Kate Bush stuff. I have a lot of various Kate Bush records. This is a Experiment 4 7 inch, lots of, oh, 7 inch, 12 inch rather. Lots of different records, loads of classics. Um, Various other editions of stuff, like this is a US edition of the uh, Kick Inside, her first album. Um, yeah, there's some stuff here. Uh, oh, this is um, 
This is probably the most expensive record in here, actually. This is a first edition kick inside picture disc. Um, this was actually, this used to always go for quite a bit of money back in the day. I have no idea what it would go for now. Um, I actually spent only about 30 quid on it, which was really cheap on eBay back in the day. Um, and I've also got, like, there's loads of, like, paintbrush. If I just get some random ones out, there's all sorts of, like, ugh, seven inches. Adam and the Ants, uh, Peter Gabriel, and of course, more Kate Bush stuff. <laughs> lots and lots of Kate Bush stuff. Most of the Kate Bush stuff I got, like, it was all kind of around the mid 2000s or so when I was really kind of into my big Kate Bush mode. I mean, I still am. I mean, I still consider her my absolute favourite of artists. Um, and yeah, I just, I was always going on eBay and getting new Kate Bush things. So, yes, that was how I kind of spent my um, late teenage years and early 20s um, buying Kate Bush stuff. Misspent youth? Yeah, I suppose you could say that in a way. Um, the only thing about all these records is, guess what I don't have at the moment? I don't actually have a record player to play any of them on. So at the moment they just kind of sit there and um, don't get used. I would like a record player but I just don't have the space for one at the moment. If and when I eventually move from here, that's hopefully something that I'll be able to have. Although, obviously, you know, there's other things to prioritise before having enough space for your record player when you move, when you move places. But we'll see. Hopefully, and these and these records can actually get used again. Now, having moved the camera pretty much all of 45 degrees, this is my um, kind of corner shelf. I have. A various bunch of things in here like my top shelves are kind of devoted to mainly all sorts of camera equipment stuff like that I kind of thought it'd be a bigger space to put in because I used to have it in those same shelves where the records are now but now they're over there the only trouble with having it all like this is that there's no real rhyme or reason to any fit so when you pull one thing out generally everything else comes out with it I really kind of need to maybe sort out and get a better solution um, also here I have um, actually get into games at last. This is my all my PlayStation games. I do actually have quite a lot of PlayStation games. Probably about, I don't know, well over 100. I know that much. Um, a lot of really good titles here. Some bought, some donated things like, you know, just looking here, we've got like Karushi, we've got Vibribon, stuff like that. I've also got Final Fantasy VII at the top, two copies of it, a normal one and a platinum one. The normal one is the one that I've had since 1997, one of the things that I managed to keep through the years. And um, if we go, excuse me, if we go down a bit, sorry that you, and my head's been cut off now, there's other things here, I've got uh, my computers here, there's my Amiga and my Spectrum, there's two Playstations, one of which is chipped, um, there's a Retron 5 which was awesomely donated to me by Chris of uh, Games You Loved, and uh, various other things, my Monster Joystick, or oh, more camera equipment, more audio equipment, my microphone lives here, and uh, various other things like that. Also there's my lights that I also use if I really want to get a good shot in. Which isn't often, it has to be said, as you can probably tell. And last, but by no means least, this is my shelf where I keep the majority of my games on. Like, my Mega Drive games, they all live here. These are all kind of the good ones, and I've got some less good ones down here. This is my kind of loose ones, you can't even see that. Um, my PlayStation games all live here, my PlayStation 2 games, that is. They're all here, again, there's tons of PlayStation games. These shelves are all like double stack so there's more games behind them <laughs> but that's the good thing that's how deep these ikea shelves are and so yeah there's like 100 150 maybe ps2 games in all this lot uh, spectrum games live up the top as well and yeah and plus some gaming magazines and other assorted cool things are all here yeah it's um it's a nice little space. I mean, I kind of reorganised it a bit, so it's actually fairly presentable at the moment. It probably won't last, but yeah, that's a, that's a bit of coolness. Okay. Now, if we just look up at the top here, there's even more consoles that are for your prisoners, or computers, actually. There's a Commodore 64 up here, which I 
used quite well in my gremlin video i kind of need to use it more and also up here just in case you were wondering about it which you probably still are is my sharp x68000 i mean i say sharp x68000 um there's pretty much nothing actually in it but the motherboard i got it for very cheap uh a while back and it's it's basically just a shell that needs some stuff putting into it some people do ask me you know how much work have you done on an x68000 kim that you put in a video and um my answer to that is um none mainly because at the moment this room being as it is i really don't have enough space to do anything with this x68000 i mean i could um like set it up but then i couldn't actually put it anywhere at the moment because as you can see, space in this room is kind of at a premium. So at the moment, it just sits there, literally hanging off the shelf because it's so massive. Now, before I end this video, there is actually kind of one other cool thing that I have in this room from a kind of video making perspective that perhaps I ought to end with. I do actually have a green screen, believe it or not. Um, where is the green screen, you might ask? Well, it's on the floor. And boom. Here's my green screen. And I mean, I could do all sorts of things with this green screen, couldn't I? I could, I could pretend that I was in a better gaming room than this one, for example. So this is a, an Elgato retractable green screen, something they came out with fairly recently. And then it's actually kind of a cool little thing. It works pretty nicely. It doesn't really get crimped up here. Fits very neatly down there and doesn't really get in the way. And it's only cheap. I mean, it's pretty cheap as far as, anyway, as far as like retractable green screens go. So it's uh, very nice for anyone who does green screen work. I actually barely do any green screen stuff, but it's nice to have this if and when I actually do it. And well, with this unimpressive shot in the books, there's really not much else to show you in this room. I mean, there just isn't. Um, that is my game room. This is my game room come studio come bedroom, uh, where the magic happens. I don't even have a fridge to show you or anything. and. You can see all like the three month old produce in there and all that. So with that done, um, I guess there's only one thing left for you to do and that's uh, get the hell out of here. Go, over there, go, bye for now. Oh God, this is so humiliating, see ya. Thank you so much for watching my humble little room tour. I hope you enjoyed it as terrible as it was. If for some reason you like this video, you could always comment, you could subscribe, hit that bell. But also have a look at my social media, my Twitter and my Patreon, where if you join up, you could join this list of the great and the good, as well as various other perks. Anyway, here it is. Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Asobi Quan DX, Chris, Chris Cox, Conrad Pritchard, Daniel Briggs, Dave Cork, David Rose, Dustin Cooper, Gary Samaden, Geordie Alex, James Brown, James Loveridge, Jason Stevens, Jace Alexander, Jeff Ladd, Lee Norris, Lucas Kiligowski, Matthias Gramzov, Martin Pataki, Nicholas Tristan, Nick Smith, Nicky and Bunty, Peter Jack, Potter Margell, Ren Bimon, Are You OK 2000, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Yoka Operator, Zach Roach, and to all the rest of the community, thank you and goodbye.